Today, two flagship machines at vastly different price points battle it out over five rounds to see who reigns supreme when it comes to home espresso. It's like MMA for coffee nerds. Okay, it's nothing like MMA, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Before we get started, a big thanks to Banky Brewing Tools for loaning us the Profitech Pro 700. Also, if you enjoy the content we make, then please take a second to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people. Cool, let's get started. So while we work on the full review of the Profitech Pro 700, which should be out soon, we thought it would be nice to answer a question we get quite often. Should I get a manual lever machine or a semi-automatic? So we decided to pit the Flare 58 against the Pro 700 and compare these two flagships across five different categories to see which one is a better fit for you. Diving right in, let's take a look at workflow and learning curve. Okay, so with any device, it takes some time to settle into a flow that works well for you. With a machine like the Profitech, it's just a little simpler because everything is in one place and you don't really need to worry about faffing or fiddling with multiple things. For example, just turn on the machine, wait for 30 minutes, and everything you need is ready to go. Once everything is nice and hot, the E61 group head is very temperature stable, and also having two boilers means that you can pull back-to-back -back shots while simultaneously steaming milk, making it much quicker to churn out drinks. With the flare, you need to pull the lever up, give it about 20 minutes to warm up, then you need something like a kettle to heat the water because obviously the flare doesn't have its own boiler. This heated water then needs to be transferred into the brew chamber to be able to pull a shot. If you're then making a milk drink, you also need some other gadget to be able to heat and texture. The flare also has a steeper learning curve. Over and above understanding the basics and dynamics of espresso, which can already crush your self-confidence, it also requires a lot more attention. Pumps are really good at doing the exact same thing over and over. You on the other hand, not so much. So you need to pay attention and focus on what's happening and what pressure you're at and how you're delivering that pressure. Overall, while we absolutely love the flare and have a really tight workflow, having used it every day for well over a year, it's undeniable that it's a little easier having everything in one unit and just having to flip a switch. And with that, the Profitech takes an early lead. But just having to flip a switch, that's a tad boring, right? I can't be the only one who feels this way. And that brings me to the next round, which is play or fun. This is a big one for people like me who love to experiment and truly enjoy the process of making coffee. If you're interested in profiling your shots, having full control over pressure and instant tactile feedback, then the flare wins hands down. To do something similar, you'd need the $200 flow kit for the Profitech, and it's still not nearly as fun. The element of play and the satisfaction of having crafted something with your own two hands is a feeling that no semi-automatic machine can give you. If you aren't committed to those 12-hour pre-infusions at 0.01 bars, then why even bother with espresso? Anyway, the scores are now tied, with Flair taking around two, so Let's look at when this fun can get quite frustrating. Next up, we have consistency. Okay, I mentioned this briefly in the workflow section. With the Profitech, you have an electric pump that is incredibly precise, and so it's very, very good at doing the same thing over and over and over. So if you're looking for consistency, then it's a no contest. Okay, say you're dialing in a shot and you change just the grind size, keeping all other variables the same, then you can be quite sure that that change you made is what affected the taste of the shot. With the flare, it's you doing the pump's work and you're human and it's called human error for a reason. No matter how hard you try, there's going to be some fluctuations and variations in the way that you deliver pressure from one shot to the next. And there's just no getting around that. Listen, don't feel bad. It's the imperfections that make us beautiful, right? Well, there is a way to reduce this error though, but it's going to cost you. With a little practice, a device like the Smart Espresso Profiler can help you recreate pressure curves fairly accurately. 
If you're interested, we've made an in-depth video on this linked up here and in the description below. But while this is a great add-on, it also costs nearly as much as the Flare. And that's a great segue to talk about price as the Profitec pulls ahead yet again. Okay, things are heating up as we enter round four. When it comes to price, you have the Flare at $575 that punches way above its price. And even if you factor in additional expenses like a kettle and milk texturing equipment, you're still well below the 3K mark that you'd pay for the Profitec. It's very hard to beat a manual lever setup when it comes to price. And if you don't need milk steaming, then it's even more of a no-brainer. So wait, it's down to the wire. With the score tied at 2-2, it all comes down to this last round, maintenance and repair. So a machine like the Profitec needs a little TLC to keep it running nice and smooth. Flush the group head after pulling a shot, back flush every week with a cleaner like Kafisa, remove and clean the shower screen every week or so. I know, it sounds like I'm talking about a bathroom, but seriously, have you ever seen a neglected shower screen? It'll make you throw up at the sight. It also ruins your coffee, which then ruins your day, which then ruins your entire life. So just keep the thing clean. You also need to remove and drain the drip tray periodically so you don't have moss growing in there. And lastly, a service every six months is required to ensure that all gaskets, boilers, pumps, and anything else that can break are all in order and functioning properly. Coming to the flare, you have to, uh, wait. Ah, no. Honestly, I'm drawing a blank here. I can't really think of anything. I guess if you're bored, you could pull the plunger out and give it a wipe down every once in a while. But basically, keep the puck screen clean and you're good. It's such a simple machine that it makes repairs and service super easy. It's crazy how little you need to do. I mean, in the last 16 months, we've had to change one gasket. That's it. We absolutely love this about the flare and it also means we have a winner. Okay, that was quite close, but it should be fairly clear to you which way you're leaning, irrespective of who won today. Both these machines are phenomenal in their own right and are capable of producing stellar espresso. But which one is right for you? Well, if 3K is too pricey, you love experimenting, you're okay with a steeper learning curve and a slightly more convoluted workflow, then the 58 is the machine for you. On the other hand, if you just can't be asked to put in the effort required for a manual machine, you're just looking for convenience and speed, and you regularly make more than a couple of shots back to back, then the 700 is a beast of a machine that will not disappoint. Also, if you wait for a couple of weeks, we'll be posting an in-depth review of the 700, which should help a lot with your decision if you are considering this machine or something in this price bracket. This video was really fun to work on with this slightly different format, and while there are obviously an overwhelming number of espresso machines available today at prices ranging from like $100 all the way to several thousand, this comparison was more to highlight the pros and cons of two very different, very popular categories of espresso machines. We hope it was helpful or at least entertaining. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and brew aramse.